Yeah, so first of all, we're going to look at the uh, Philippians, from Philippians, and uh, chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. Actually, we're going to read from verse 2. I implore Euodia and I implore Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who laboured with me in the gospel with Clement also. And the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, I get, again I say, will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Okay, that's the reading for today. So what we're looking at here um, is a couple of women who obviously were, um, they had a bit of a, a difference of opinion in the church, and uh, he's, he's saying to the church at Philippians to help these two uh, women to, uh, to actually get together, really, and, and to, to rejoice in the, law, the Lord and to be of the same mind. You know, that's the important, to be united and, uh, and also in prayer. So that's what he's saying here. It's a very important um, point of teaching that he's giving us. And... Uh, he says that the rest of his fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So he's talking to believers. We're actually, this is a message to believers in the church. And it's about coming together rather than having problems with one another. And to have the same mind in Christ, in the Lord. So we have lots of different variants of opinions and uh, ways we see the world and so on and so forth. We all have our own um, way of looking at things and possibly um, for many people we have our own way of doing things too but the most important thing is that we must have the same mind as Christ there is consensus in Christ not not consensus in public opinion with the church it's different it's different from the world the world has a consensus of public opinion which is like the lowest common denominator and therefore it's going down and down and down the standards are not God's standards and the world standards through public opinion and consensus of opinion with uh, a fallen world is getting worse and and yet we're told in the church to have the consensus of opinion by having the same mind of Christ so coming together in um, in spiritual understanding understanding the Lord Jesus and having his will for the church which is about peacemaking which is about reconciliation and it's about bringing it back together and we know that those people who do that we know that these people who are prepared to have the, the the same mind of Christ to search out the will of God and to have the same mind of Christ in everything that we see and do in the church and outside the church as believers um, we know that that is the Lord's will and so therefore we know that that's what God wants from us and therefore if we are true believers we know that our name is going to be written in the book of life it's, as it says in, chapter, in verse 3 <coughs> so verse 4 says rejoice in the Lord always again I will say rejoice let your gentleness be known to all men so he's talking about uh, two women coming together in the church but he's also talking to the church, to the believers there in Philippi, and he's saying, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. So there's a sense in which we know that this grace that we have that comes from God, the same love that God showed us in Zephaniah, in the sense that, you know, he... He's singing over us and he quiets our mind uh, in him and he brings us peace and all this uh, idea that you know, we, we need to be rejoicing because of what, of what God's given us. Um, and that should bring a gentleness. There should be rejoicing in the fact that God has loved us, 
And that should bring gentleness in our spirit. We should be gentle of spirit and you know, be people who are gentle, not um, overbearing, not dictatorial, um, you know, not harsh and hard and legalistic, but gentle because the Lord is at hand. In other words, God is watching you. God's hand is upon you. God's hand is upon his church. And therefore, we are all in the church as true believers. We are his children. And he's no respecter of persons. So each child of God in the church is of equal value to God. doesn't matter what we seem to be outside, but what we have inside is an adoption into God's family as a child of God, joint heirs with Christ. We become princes and princesses in his kingdom, so we all have equal worth to God. So this is something we have to get into our spirit, that there, there should be a gentleness that comes through us because of that grace is, that's on our life, because we know we have a Father in heaven who really loves us, then we should be gentle with one another. And gentle with ourselves too. You know, it says the, se the, second, the, the second commandment <coughs> is to love your neighbor as yourself. So there is a gentleness that you need to have with yourself too. And it says in verse... Six, be anxious for nothing. Are you anxious? Are you worrying about everything? This is what God is saying. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So yeah, things in this world sometimes do cause us to be a bit anxious. They initially come up and and make us anxious, but at the same time, there should be this steadying <coughs> that goes on in us, in our spirit. The spirit determines the physical. So if we're really walking in the spirit, it doesn't take very long before we calm on the inside. We may seem to other people that we are not calm, but when we really have God, um, God's Holy Spirit in us, when we do have this witness of the Holy Spirit, that we we come past this world anxiety. We come past the, the stuff that's going on in the world and we, we begin to rest in the peace of God. We begin to become more uh, conscious of God in our lives and we need to know that instead of being anxious, we've got to take things to God in prayer. <coughs> so by everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. So we've got to be thankful to God. There should be thankfulness. And, you know, these things are, are meant as measures for us to measure ourselves. Are we thankful to God? Because our prayer and supplication should come with a thanks, an element of thanksgiving to God. Let your request be made known to God, but do it in a, in a grateful way. Don't do it in a in a, you know, through gritted teeth way, do it in a way that you recognize God as God. That you recognize God not just as the Almighty, but to recognize God as your Father who loves you, who's singing over you, who can quiet your mind, who can bring peace and understanding, spiritual understanding to you. And so this prayer and supplication, <coughs> the Lord's Prayer, is a normal prayer where we're coming to God and we're giving God the glory and we're asking for our daily bread and we're asking God to keep us from the evil one and temptations and so on. And at the same time, <coughs> we have supplications, which is, you know, all manner of things that we're asking God for and sometimes we're, we're making, um, you know, we're making requests for other people and, and we're praying about other people. But the most important thing is that it needs to be with thanksgiving. It needs to be with a grateful heart because of what God is doing and what God has done for us. And it says then, verse 7, <coughs> And the peace of God which pass surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. <coughs> so what does that mean to us? 
do you have the peace of God in your heart? Do you have the peace of God in your life? And you might say, well, sometimes I feel a, I have a sense of peace, of God's peace. Other times I find that maybe I'm not at peace because of the anxieties that are around my life and all the things that go on. But the most important thing is that when we really come to God and we give God uh, back control of our lives and make God as our priority and get into the will of God, this is what happens. We get the peace of God. Once we recognize God is in control, that brings us a sense of peace. Because usually we get to the end of ourselves where we can't seem to make things happen the way we want to, um, or we can't seem to keep control of things that are causing us problems, or we can't actually um, make people wise around us, and we have to let them make mistakes and come to their own understanding, and especially people that we try to bring to God, we have to let God do his work, and therefore we've got to be aware of the fact that you know, we can't, there's many things we can't do anything about. And that's where the anxiety comes in. But when we really give our stuff back to God, where we really ask God to look after us, when we see God as a, a father figure, a loving father, not just a father figure who you know, is going to come down on us, but a father figure who loves us, that has really brought us into his family, adopted us. He loves us so much, he adopted us, even when we were in rebellion towards him. He's brought us into his family, and when we can give everything back to God, when we can come to the foot of the cross and let God have our burdens and our cares, you know, we get the peace of God in our hearts. And it surpasses all understanding. We think, well, I don't know how that can work. You might be thinking to yourself, well, I'm not sure how that's going to work because, you know, I like to be in control of things. I, I'm, a, I'm someone who's very independent and, you know, I usually sort my own stuff out and, you know, relying on somebody else or something else isn't my thing. I like to be able to determine my own future. I want to make sure my money's okay and, you know, my, my relationships are okay and, and all the things that I'm involved in and my family. I want to make sure that I've got my fingers on the pulse of my life. I want to make sure that I'm dealing with things in the right way. I don't want it to get out of control. I don't want it to get out of kilter. I don't want to get out of balance. I want to be in control of my life. And the strange thing is that when we bring it, everything back to God, we, we suddenly have this peace that descends upon us. A peace sometimes that comes up from the inside where we have it. Kind of, it's, it's almost like it descends upon us, but it's coming up from the inside. As well. It just almost baptizes us in this sense of peace. And it surpasses all our understanding. We don't understand really where it's coming from other than the fact that God gives it to us. We don't really understand how he can take care of things and give us that peace when we are so anxious, when we are so worried. But if we don't go to God, we're not going to get that peace. We're going to be anxious in the world. We're not going to have a, um, a sense of peace in our life. Um, but we need it because it, the word says here that it's going to guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So it doesn't just come because we recognize God as God, it comes when we recognize what he's done for us through the Lord Jesus Christ. It comes when we understand Christ's will in our lives. It, it comes when we're actually being obedient and following Christ because that peace comes because our unconscious, sorry, because our conscience isn't bothering us anymore. We're not at odds with God. We're not we're not re in rebellion to God. Once we get into God's will, once we have the mind of Christ, which we talked about earlier, um, that he was imploring uh, Eudodia and Syntic to, to, to get together and have the mind of Christ and the will of Christ, which would be reconciliation and peace and harmony in the Lord. Um, you know, once, we've, once we've come back to Christ, then this peace of God comes into our life and it surpasses all the understanding, and it guards our hearts. It, gu it will guard your heart. So if you're worried about being hurt, 
That's often what makes you anxious. You're worried about being hurt. You're worrying about being rejected. You're worried about not being accepted. You're worried about the cares of this world and how you're going to be um, feel guilt and shame and upset and worry and uh, you know feeling less than other people and and maybe looked down upon or rejected by others. You know this peace of God when you know that you're in God's will and God loves you and God gives you a sense of peace about that. It's not so uh, important then that you have to have to worry about everybody else. If you're right with God and you have the love of God, it does surpass all understanding. It, it does actually come into your life in such a way that it frustrates the intelligence of the intelligent and it brings a humility to you which is also very peaceful because you're not striving in this world. You're at peace. There is a sense in which without God in our lives, without Christ in our lives, we are striving to be in competition and, and to be acceptable by everything and all the people around us. But when we come back to God, God gives us a different attitude of heart and he brings this peace and it, it surpasses everything that we can understand in the world it bypasses all our sense realm and because it comes into the spiritual realm and this spirituality this spiritual peace that we get by being reconciled with God through Christ changes us on the inside and brings this sense of peace and that in itself guards our heart and also our minds. We're no longer at conflict with ourselves. We're no longer anxious and at conflict, hoping and worrying that we're going to be acceptable by people in this world, that we are going to be looked upon as uh, someone of status or someone who is worthy or someone who has value. We, we're not concerned with that anymore. That's how it guards our minds. And and we're at peace with God, and so therefore our minds are at rest. If you have a very active mind and you're anxious, your mind's not at rest. If you've tried to sleep when you're anxious, what happens is you find it hard to sleep. And it's because your mind isn't at rest. You're worried about things. You're concerned about things. And maybe you're too worried about everybody else. And what you need to be concerned about is not people who can only kill the body, but the Lord who can destroy both body and soul, but you also have a God who loves you. And so you're no longer worried about it because you've repented of, of what you've done wrong. You've got into a right position with God. You've come to a point with God that you, know, you are reconciled because you've come through Jesus Christ. And so this brings a peace to your mind, not just your heart. It doesn't just cause you to be um, to be at peace in terms of not worrying about being hurt because God loves you and he, he will heal all your hurts but it's also about your mind and your thoughts and your attitudes there is a peace that comes to you you have a peace with the things around you you're no longer striving to be able to be um, Number one, you're no longer striving to be accepted. You're no longer striving to keep up with the Joneses. You're no longer striving to have um, security through a person or through finances or through your status or position. Your, your peace comes in all of those things because you don't need to strive anymore because God gives you this peace and it surpasses the understanding of this world. It doesn't surpass spiritual understanding because we understand it as spiritual believers. We understand something different. And this is why we have to accept and understand that it only comes through Christ because it's a spiritual peace that comes in that de determines our physicality. It comes because we, can, we step out of the sense realm into the spiritual realm and recognize Christ for who he is.
understanding the Father's love for us and what he's done for us by sending Christ for us. This Christmas, we're, we're going to celebrate the fact that Christ was given to us to reconcile man to God. And, and this peace that comes through Christ is amazing. This peace that comes through Christ, if you've ever experienced that peace, coming from a position of having to worry and be in, in all manner of anxiety about your life, and suddenly coming to an understanding of, of what God has done for you and what Jesus has given up for you on the cross and covered your sins and brought you forgiveness, that peace, the peace of mind that comes, is incredible and that suddenly your heart is filled with love. You're no longer concerned about hurt because Christ has bathed you in his love. He's given you, he's filled you with his love. He's shown you what real love is all about, which is giving, not taking, which is unconditional, not conditional. He's shown you real love. So why would you want the, the love that the world offers when you have the love that Christ offers, which is unconditional? It, it brings a peace to your mind and it also brings a peace to your heart. It, it helps you to guard your heart. And this is why it's so important, because it comes through Christ. Amen?